Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now we're all used to using physical keys to get into things like our house or our car. And I've also shown in a previous video how we can use a physical key, a security key, to gain access to our online accounts, particularly to Google's online services. Now I've just got hold of two new YubiKeys, that's the YubiKey 5 NFC and the YubiKey 5 CI. And notice in this one, it's got a lightning port on it so you can use it with an iPhone. So if you want to find out more, please well, let me explain. Okay, I want to do three quick things in this video. First, I want to show you how you register these keys with Google services. That's really just a recap of what I covered in the other video. Then I want to show you how you use the YubiKey 5CI to gain access to Google services on an iPhone because of course it's got the lightning connector here. And then finally, I want to show you how you can use the extra facilities that you find in the YubiKey 5 NFC, including a idea called static passwords. Okay, let's get cracking. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to add the YubiKey 5 NFC. So I've already got a two-step verification uh, enabled on this account, and that's what I cover in my other video. So you need to go to myaccount.google.com slash security, and here you can check loads and loads of things about the security settings you have with your Google account. And down here, two-step verification already enabled because I'm already using some YubiKeys. And then we're gonna go in here to add on some more. So here we are with the two-step verification page. As you can see, I've already got some YubiKeys and now we want to add an extra key. So we click on add security key here. And then it says what type of key do you want to add? I can use some of the devices I've got registered to my Google account, or we're gonna use a USB or Bluetooth external security key. Uh, make sure that you have the key with you. Yep, it got it here. Okay, registering the key, insert the key. So what I need to do now is insert the YubiKey 5NFC into the USB port of my PC. And then you need to touch the little touch sensor pad in the middle there. And Google saying, do you want to be able to pick up this uh, model of security key? Yes, I do. And now we can give it a name and I, I just generally stick with the product name NFC, uh, YubiKey 5NFC. So that should be okay. And that's it, that key is now added. So I'm able to uh, author, authorize my logins using that key. So this is the YubiKey 5CI. And as you can see, it's quite interesting because we have an Apple Lightning uh, plug at one end and we have USB-C at the other. So this can be used on lots of laptops and mobile phones and iPads and iPhones and so on. So this is a really interesting key, kind of very different to the other ones which are, you know, your USB type uh, A kind of standard connector and that's it. Maybe it'll have NFC, maybe it'll have Bluetooth, but you've got this kind of thing. Now these are the USB-C and the Lightning. So uh, I'm keen to try this out now on the iPhone. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing for the YubiKey 5CI. Now I've actually moved over to my Chromebook because my desktop doesn't have any USB type C ports. I suppose that's a good indication. Maybe I need to do a bit of an upgrade soon. Anyway, so here I am on my Chromebook. And of course, it's a Chromebook, so I'm running in Chrome without any problems. So we go down to two-step verification again. And like before, now we have the set of keys that are already enabled, including that YubiKey 5NFC that we added in a little while ago. We're now going to add another security key and it will scroll down to USB or Bluetooth. Got the key, yes I have, so let's step on. Okay, I'm now going to plug the key into the USB Type-C port. And then I've touched the two buttons on the side, and so Google says uh, I want to read that, we're gonna allow it to do it. And it's done, and again I'll just put a normal YubiKey 5CI, I won't do anything other than that. Okay, and that's it, the key is registered. Okay, so here we are on the iPhone, and if I want to set up Gmail on my iPhone, obviously I've installed the app, so let's go in here, go to sign in, and I'm gonna use my Google account, and Google would like to sign in, yes. So I type in my email address and password, and now that I've done that, it says, well, you've got two-step verification installed, so you're going to have to prove another way that you are who you say you are. And of course, I prove that because I have the key. So we go to next. 
Do we like to sign in use a security key? So we insert the key and now I'm going to use the lightning connector here. And now it says I'm going to have to, the accessory UB key uses an app that you do not have installed. Would you like to? Well, I'm going to ignore that for the moment. I'm just going to press the two buttons here. There you go. It's activated. So there you go. I am now actually in my Gmail account. And of course, that was only possible because I have the YubiKey. So not all the keys that uh, YubiKey create are equal. So for example, this one and this one have some extra functionality. So let's have a look at the difference between this and some of the other keys and then have a look at the static password functionality. So as we can see here, YubiKey offer a range of different keys. In the previous video, I showed you how to use the security key series. In this video, of course, we've been using the YubiKey 5 series, the YubiKey 5 NFC and the YubiKey 5 CI. And of course, they also have the FIP series, which is designed more for government or business use. Now, I wanted to say at this point, this video is not sponsored by YubiKey in any way whatsoever. However, the links that I do include in the description are affiliate links, which means if you do choose to buy a key through those links, then a little bit of money will also possibly come my way. So if you look down at the differences here, you can see obviously there are physical differences. USB-A, USB-C, for example, is available, and that's what we've just been demonstrating. NFC is available on both of those. But all I want to get down to is here that this big block here, you can see this big block here is just empty here. All this here is empty on the security key, and there's a whole bunch of other uh, facilities that you get in the 5 series and the FIP series. Now, of course, if you scroll down a bit more, you can see that you can do, for example, your Google account, Microsoft account, you can do your password managers like 1Password, Dropbox, Facebook, Twitter, and I, in fact, I tested this out on Facebook and Twitter, and they work exactly as they do in a very similar way to the Google account. But also notice here you can't do computer login on the uh, security key series. You can only do that on the UB5 series. So what I wanted to do was to show you just one of the extra things, and that's here, the secure static password. Now, this is not as secure as other methods like the Ubico OTP, or if you're using, for example, Open PGP or Open GPG. What I want to show you is that there are extra functionality available in these keys, and this is a very simple one to demonstrate to you. So let's just do that. Okay, so what I've got here is a piece of software called the YubiKey Manager, and of course you download that from the YubiKey uh, website, and it says here that I've plugged in a YubiKey 5 NFC, which is the one I was using in the uh, video earlier on, and we'll go here to applications, and there are different things you can set up on this key, and we're going to look at one-time passwords. Now, as you saw in the video, you have to press the button, uh, touch the little pad to get the key to activate. And that is what this slot is configured, the short touch. But we can configure the long touch, which basically means you put your finger there and you keep it there to do some extra functionality. So let's go into configure. And as I said, there's all these different things you can do. And these are various different setups that you can use for di different systems. We're going to use a static password because it is the easiest to demonstrate now in this video. So the basic idea with the static password is that when you long press now on the key, it will put always the same long complex password that you'll never remember. So if we hit generate here, we can see, there you go. That's a pretty long password that you're never going to remember, but you don't need to because the key generates it for you. So if we just click finish, that is now configured inside of the key. And what we do is we open up Notepad now, we can demonstrate how this works. So here we have Notepad, and if I now long press on the key there, you see there is that long password. And if I long press on it again, you get exactly the same password. That's why it's not as secure as possibly other methods. But imagine if you had to do a login, maybe you want to prefix it with something. So you know, might have the word, you know, sunshine, and then, we press it and we get the long password out. So you can actually kind of have a bit of it that's in your mind, a bit of it you've remembered and a bit of it that's on the key. And it's only that key that will produce that uh, static password. Now there are lots of other functionality that you can get with this key, but this is a really interesting one to show just how quickly you can get other things up and running. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.